today we're looking at glyphosate resistant kochia, or what we suspect is glyphosate resistant kochia. And with me I have the checklist from PSI for their qPCR test, which means uh, a quick test using green material rather than seeds to test for herbicide resistance. So what they say to look for is patches of actively growing kochia plants or patches of kochia plants with individuals showing a range of injury symptoms from no injury to completely dead approximately two weeks after an application of glyphosate. So we're seeing that show up a lot in soybean fields right now. It's uh, June 18th, 19th, June 19th. And so this is what we're starting to see is these fairly large kochia plants in the field popping out over top of the soybeans. And the reason that I selected this patch is because I also have this sad little guy that obviously got hit by glyphosate, but not quite dead. So we're seeing that range of injury. So the first thing that they tell you to do is take a photo of the plants in the patch. Well, I've gone a step further and I've GPS the coordinates for this entire patch. So I know exactly where all hundred plants of this patch are. I'll send in that picture, but I'll also send in a picture that shows this varying range so that that helps them with diagnosing what might be happening. That way we've uh, figured out it's not a spray or miss. It's not something where we just had a, a coverage problem because we've got dead plants and live plants in the same area. And that's really what I'm looking for. Not just a big patch of green plants and no dead ones. I'm probably gonna guess that that's something that hasn't been sprayed. Okay, so each kochia plant has to be sampled separately. Don't put two or three plants together because they all have slightly different genetics. Collect the top two to three inches of each branch, a minimum of five to eight tips. We're gonna have a good one here. And we're gonna put that into my Ziploc bag that I've labeled. It's got a date, it's got my GPS locations, it's got a legal land description and the RM description or the RM name, okay? Once I've done that, once I've sampled it, it's immediately gonna go on ice. I'm not throwing it in the cab of my truck. And the other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use scissors because I want that leaf material. And if I rip it off, chances are I'm gonna lose some leaves. This is the plant that we suspect is resistant. So we're just gonna snip the top two to three inches. Like I said, rather than um, pulling it, this way I'm keeping all the leaf material. They recommend five to eight leaf tips. We definitely have that many. And they want the actively growing stuff. You'll notice I'm not wearing gloves because at the lab they told me that it doesn't really matter about human DNA. They just want it a nice fresh sample. They're gonna freeze dry it and extract what they need out of it, okay? So all from the same plant goes into one bag that's clearly labeled. Five to eight grams at least of material. I'm gonna squeeze out some air and I'm putting it on ice right away to keep it fresh. Again, like I said, not in the cab of a truck for a couple of days or something like that. I'm gonna take this in today, drop it off, and they say within five business days that there will be results that are available for me. So it's a really quick test, an easy way to figure out whether that patch in your field is resistant or not. And then you can take other control measures, whether that's mowing, whether that's hand roguing, whatever that is, to minimize the amount of herbicide resistant kochia that's in your field for next year to deal with.